Swipe Up, episode 229, the podcast where I share my unfiltered thoughts on the latest news and entertainment updates. I'm your host, Ray Taylor. First story, TikTok is setting, uh, is releasing a setting that will allow, uh, will restrict, I should say, people who are under the age of 18 to one hour of use, and then to go past that, they would have to put in a code. Um... Let me read some of this before giving my opinion. TikTok is introducing a new feature for teens, families, and the broader community. The screen time tool is being improved uh, with more custom options, new default settings for teens, uh, for teen accounts, and expanded family pairing with more parental controls. According to uh, accounts belonging to users below the age of 18 years old will automatically be set to 16 minute daily screen time limits. Teen who opt out of the 60 minute default and spend more than a hundred minutes on TikTok in a day will be prompted to set a daily screen time limit. Teen accounts aged 13 to 15 will be set to private by default and direct messaging is only available to those ages 16 and older. Uh, Family pairing is being uh, introduced with custom daily screen time limits, uh, a screen time dashboard, and a setting to mute notifications for teens. Everyone will soon be able to set their own customized screen time limit for each day of the week and set a schedule to mute notifications. TikTok will continue to invest in in improving current features and introducing new tools, educational videos about family pairing feature creators will be available in app. Uh, TikTok hopes that these features will help families establish an ongoing dialogue about safety and well-being in the digital world. First off, on the face of it, reading the headline, This is only going to encourage underage kids to set up accounts and lying about their age. So that's one thing. But when you read all of the things that they're doing, one, I think it's uh, I think they mean well, clearly giving parents more control and having kind of maybe pairing their account, seeing a dashboard, being able to mute things. Uh, making accounts private automatically, but still a way to get away from all of those things is to just lie about your age when you sign up, right? You, no social media requires you to validate your age in any way. And if you're under the age of 18, I don't even know how you would do that to begin with. Uh, or are you going to like scan your birth certificate or something? So just setting up a account I mean, even if you have an account, right, you have, let's say, right, just for for just shits and giggles, you're under 18, right? Say you're 17 years old, right? And you don't want your parents to know what you're using TikTok for. You don't want your parents knowing. I remember at that age, I mean, I've never been an age where I wanted my parents to know what I was doing at any given moment whether it being online or in person, right? To have that kind of big brother type of oversight in your life. Nobody likes that, right? Nobody wants their parent tapped into every nook and cranny of your life. So first off, this has never been a thing that kids have ever been okay with, but we're living in an age where parents have that ability. They have the ability to track their kids. They have their ability to... There's apps that kids can put on their phones, the parents could put on their kids' phones to track their location, to uh, control their phones, to c- contact their kids. Like there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, a lot of things that if you were to do it to anybody other than your child would be considered a in, like an invasion of privacy. So... It wouldn't be surprised, surprising that any kid would want to avoid that. And the easiest way to do that is to, you know, allow you have your account, right? That your parents have control over. And then you set up a second account that 
is fairly effortless to do on any social media platform. And when you go sign up, you use a different date of birth. And instantly you have a, an account that your parents don't know you have that is not restricted in any way. So it's like this isn't necessarily going to protect kids in any way, but it will allow parents to really have a sense of false security in a lot of ways. I'm sure there will be kids that will be fine with their parents spying on everything, knowing every single thing they do, right? I'm sure there are kids out there that will be that. But there's going to be billions of kids, right? I don't know how many people there. Millions of kids, thousands of kids, hundreds of kids, multiple handfuls of kids, right? Dozens upon dozens of kids that won't want to have this kind of oversight, won't want to have these restrictions in any way. And it, it, there's the easiest way to get around that. I think part of why TikTok is probably doing this because there's a lot of conservative people, politicians that want to get rid of TikTok. Um, there's been a lot of restrictions as far as government employees being allowed to have TikTok on their phones. There are bills being trying to be passed to block or ban TikTok, uh, which is insane. It's like uh, they use fear that, oh, China is stealing your information. But it's like every app on your phone is steal stealing your information is why is it okay for Mark Zuckerberg to steal your information, but then, like, some company in China who's sending balloons over? Like, if they have such a an, an amazing pipeline of information that they're getting from us that they are also need to send some weather balloon to take pictures from the sky? I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. It's just they don't like the fact that that it is not a company that they can control like they can all the other social medias in this country that, you know, have to answer to and abide by whatever the government wants, right? I'm sure the governments have back doors and to all of these have very unique access to all the other social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter. I'm sure Elon Musk is bending over backwards to give whatever information he wants to whoever he wants, including himself, right? I feel much more concerned about Elon Musk getting people's private information and personal information than I do China, right? I'm not like, I'm not overly concerned with the Chinese government. Uh, when it comes to, I think the biggest threat in the country, in the United States of America, is a political party that openly refers to themselves as domestic terrorists that are literally responsible for the majority of domestic terrorist attacks, that are responsible for making sure every man, woman, and child, whether qualified or not, is armed, right? Somebody, a group of people that want to demonize, marginalize group of people by fictionalizing these boogeymen things versus actually dealing with issues that are the actual threat to the lives of children, right? They're, they're much more concerned with banning books that they feel is going to introduce a person to a, another way of existing in this world that is something different than being straight. The, they, want to, they want to close themselves off in their own little white supremacist safe space and not have to be told the history of this country and the history of slavery and the history of the genocide that the founders of this country were responsible for. They don't want to know about the governments that the, this country, the democratically elected governments that have been overthrown by this country, like they don't want to know and and have to deal with and reckon with the actual realities of America in any way. They want to have their own little safe space of delusional belief that TikTok is the the boogeyman, that the Chinese government is the boogeyman. Meanwhile, we have just the most uneducated people being elected to Congress, and it's it's just it's mind blowing. It is mind blowing the the trajectory this country is going in, and to think that TikTok is the number one 
the the TikTok and drag queens are like the number one enemy of this of freedom and and safety of this country is just absurd. So I think part of TikTok doing this is like a preemptive thing going like, hey, look at what we're doing to make you give you control or at least the illusion of control to protect your precious children from the Internet as if TikTok is the only source of Internet, the only way to look up or find out information on a thing. I think they're far more concerned with the fact that when uh events happen in the world it is very easy to see those events happening first person as they're happening as they were during 2020 george floyd protests where you could see what the protests were like you can see people singing and dancing and holding their signs and then you could see how the police came in and just brutalized people Please come in using tools that are not allowed to be used in war against citizens of this country who are protesting police officers needlessly murdering people at a rate that is far more than one person a day. I looked it up because somebody online crying about my my uh, my statement that police kill people all of the time. I looked it up. And last year, 2022, police killed over a thousand people. So it is more than a person a day is killed by a police officer. And the majority of those are needless. The majority, there's no reason police officers should be killing people. A lot of them, unarmed people, men, women, and children die by police officers. And there's very little to no oversight, very little to no responsibility taken by police officers or their departments. So forgive me if I don't consider TikTok to be the big threat to American safety. They just don't like the fact that it is popular and it's not something that is run by somebody they they control. I, I, it's amazing how this service that you can tell when people don't use it or you can tell how they use it when they refer to it as just kids dancing. Because if you've ever used it, unless that is something, unless that's content that you engage with, that's not the TikTok that I see. I see a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, a lot of people that are into technology a lot of people who are left-leaning progressive have ideas talking about how the situations in this country, around the world, different viewpoints from different people around the world. My TikTok is not about people dancing. I do not see children in my TikTok feed. So all of these politicians, all of these people that are saying that this app is just kids dancing has either never used the app or that is the content that they are focused on watching. So they are telling on themselves in many ways, if that's what they're seeing. If the content that TikTok has chosen for them, right? Some people, because of their content, realize that they have ADHD, that they may have bipolar disorder or some version of that they may find out they like people are getting like diagnosed by the videos that they're seeing recommended to them because the algorithm is so good at feeding you things that you're you're interested in or that you relate to that sometimes there's people who've come out as being gay and one of the things that they were fed were other people who realized and came out as gay and then they realized that they oh it's like that's me that is me it is amazing so if you're the type of person who's being fed children entertainment then that is on you because that's not what i see i see stuff that i'm interested in and the last thing i'm interested in is the like dance trends or anything children are doing on the app 
I'm seeing like, oh, this is what there's like this this group in Canada who's building benches to put at bus stops that are in places that have been have no place for people to sit. They're showing like how sidewalks and things don't exist, how how being somebody who is in a city and walking, how dangerous it can be in their city because of the way the city has been planned. Like I'm seeing people who are investigating police and how they brutalize the veterans that are homeless and how dehumanizing they are treated by police officers. Like I'm seeing things that I'm interested in. So anybody that says that that defines TikTok as being a thing should really question either they don't know what they're talking about or maybe they do. The more dangerous thing is that all of these politicians, all of these adult, grown-ass, old-ass men are only seeing children dancing on the app. Because if that's what they're seeing, then that's what they want to see. It's not, it's not, they're not, you don't, you don't get engagement on an app by f- serving people things that they're not into seeing, that they're not actively searching out and spending time watching. It's it's an amazing it's amazing how accurate the for you page is on TikTok. Right? I'm not stumbling into Nazi TikTok. It doesn't happen. So TikTok, interesting what they're doing. We'll see if it does anything. It's an interesting move forward. I mean, other phones, you know, Apple has a bunch of settings that you can do. I think that's, you know, a popular thing that a lot of apps and phones and operating systems are doing to try and find a way to still have a viable business, but also at least make it seem like you're trying to make it less addictive. I mean, they're doing, it's like, it's... in many ways it's like the the gambling industry making anti-gambling ads for people who are addicted it's like how much do they want people to not be addicted to this thing that's specifically designed to be addictive kind of an interesting it's it's all in many ways it's it's like police investigating police but, uh, you know, from a PR standpoint, I, be- I guess it, it seems good. I hope TikTok doesn't get banned. But if it does, whatever. I mean, it'll be sad. It's one less social media for me to promote this show. One less social media platform for me to promote my artwork. But it's not the only platform. So, you know, it's, it's, it's how it goes. Things come and go, you know. Twitter used to be very popular, and now it's just a flaming pile of garbage. MySpace used to be a thing at one point, and now it doesn't even exist. You know, it's just uh, these things come and go. So, but it's interesting to see how a certain population, a certain group of, of political positions, are to see what they demonize, because it's usually like some kind of scapegoat thing or it's it's you know it's something where you know they can't profit as much as they want they're not getting the money from tiktok that they want you know anyway tiktok whatever interesting but it's like it's it's an easy workaround based on the headline it seemed like the only thing they were doing was any account under the age of 18 had a one hour block on it which you can just enter a code and get more time. But now, after understanding the details of it, it's way more involved than that. And all of that can be bypassed with just anybody setting up a second account. right? You have your one account that you use sometimes just so your parents think you're using it or whatever, but then you have your, your burner account. right? Just like all of the white supremacists that have social media accounts, they all have their burner accounts. Right, they all have their avatarless account that is blocked and set to private, so that they can go and spout their hate speech and not have to worry about losing their job. Right, they don't have to worry about "quote unquote" cancel culture. They don't. Want to be, they don't have to worry about being held responsible for their actions. So they set up private burner accounts, so that they can spread their hate speech and just spew their garbage anywhere they want and not have to worry about 
you know, somebody, hey, Chuck, I know where you work. You know, they don't have to worry about that. Maybe because they've already lost job, you know. Maybe they're, they've already started complaining about cancel culture or whatever. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where, where you, you wake, wake up and you realize, realize that everything, everything that you've been dreaming about, about everything that you've been, been wanting, wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.